Hey, this is Joe Hubbard from JoeHubbardBassVideos.com coming at you today with another lesson. Today I'm going to teach you a cool triad pair lick to play over the bridge of rhythm changes. So with that in mind, grab your bass and let's get started. The bridge of rhythm changes is originally written by George Gershwin, consists of four dominant seventh chords moving through the cycle of fourths with the harmonic rhythm of two bars per chord. The roots of these dominant seventh chords will be starting from the third, sixth, second, and fifth of the key. So if we were in the key of B flat, that would be D7, G7, C7, and F7. We all know what triads are, but when you combine two triads together that are mutually exclusive, meaning that there are no repeated notes between those triads, these qualities interact, creating a new and more complex bitonality. Check out how this concept will breathe new life into your lines. So let's go ahead and break these patterns down that I'm playing. The first triad pair pattern that I'm playing is over the first chord, which is D dominant seventh. So what I've got here is a D triad and an E augmented triad. So that's a major triad starting from the root of the chord and augmented triad starting from the second of the chord. So if, let's take a look at those notes. I've got D, F sharp, and A, which is the root three, five of the chord. And then I've got the nine sharp 11 and the flat seven from that E augmented triad. So what I was playing was, Break down what I've done there, I've just really gone through those um, uh, triads in different inversions. Um, so I'm playing the first the first part of the line is a four note pattern where I play three, one, three, five, then I arpeggiate back down that E augmented triad, and then come back up the D major triad in the first inversion and then come back down that E uh, augmented triad and then come back up the D major in the uh, second inversion. So all together. Very nice pattern over that chord and really fits and you, it really brings out the idea with these triad pairs is it brings out these specific tensions in the chord. So notice how we've got the 9 and the sharp 11 there over that dominant 7th chord. So over the second chord I'm really just playing a standard dominant 7th lick. There's no triad pair activity over this. So it's really just the chord tones with a few uh, chromatic ideas thrown in there. Um, uh, on the next chord which is the C7 what I'm doing is I'm playing a whole tone uh, pattern here. So I'm going like this. And really, if you look at this idea, it's just augmented uh, triads really moving in whole tones. So, and connecting them with some chromaticism. down this augmented triad here because the augmented triads are symmetrical you know it's it's a toss-up of what they actually are but if I looked at that as an A flat uh, augmented triad then I'm going down to a uh, G flat augmented so connecting with that chromatic note then down to the E augmented and then up a D augmented there with that chromatic connection. So you hear a lot of bebop players playing this idea and it really emphasizes this dominant seventh sharp five sound uh, that you hear a lot in jazz. 
Um, and then the last pattern is over the F7, and basically this is where the next triad pair idea comes in, where we're playing uh, two major triads, a tritone apart. Uh, so you'll notice that most of the triad pair activity that you hear by jazz players is really centered around um, uh, different types of triads being played either a minor second apart, a major second apart, or a tritone apart. It's not the only combinations that you can have, but you hear that a lot. So a good idea is just to say, okay, let me take two major triads and play those a minor second apart, a major second apart, and a tritone apart. Let me take two minor triads, do the same thing. Let me take two diminished triads, do the same thing. Let me take two augmented triads and do the same thing. And then start mixing them. And then start to figure out what those notes equal over the chords that you want to superimpose those over. It could be a really long study, uh, but uh, it's worth doing and you'll get some great ideas uh, you know, to play. Uh, and if you listen to a lot of modern players, Michael Brecker used triad pairs all the time. John Patitucci uses it. Um, uh, Yannick Guizdala uses this a lot. A lot of the guys are using this now, so uh, it's a good idea to, to try to delve into. So if we take a look at this F7 lick, I start with the F major triad in root position. Then I play the B major triad. That's a triad, a tritone above the F in second inversion. Then the first inversion of the F major triad in the root position of the B major triad. And then I finish it off with a little bebop leg. Just going double chromatic down to the flat seven and then back up to the root. So, and then just end it off when it goes back to the B flat major with that sort of idea it's for just that sort of resolution. So the whole pattern goes There's so many different variations available to you to play over the Rhythm Changes Bridge. In order to understand these types of substitutions, you need to learn the important concepts of diatonic substitution, tritone substitution, upper structure tensions, and harmonic alterations. Does it sound like it's going to take a lifetime to master? It can, but there are specific tools that you can learn that will accelerate this process exponentially. I cover all these tools and more on my bass mastery course at www.joehubbardbassvideos.com. Go there now and sign up for three free bass lessons. I hope to see you on the other side soon.